The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Today we are going to see how to use what we saw last time about partial derivatives to handle minimization or maximization problems involving functions of several variables. So before that, so remember last time we said that when we have a function, say, of two variables, x and y, then we have actually two different derivatives partial f, partial x, also called f sub x, is the derivative with respect to x keeping y constant. And we have partial f, partial y, also called f sub y, where we vary y and we treat x as a constant. Okay, and now one thing I didn't have time to tell you about, but hopefully you heard about in recitation yesterday, is the approximation formula that tells you what happens if you vary both x and y. So f sub x tells us what happens if we change x a little bit by some small amount delta x. F sub y tells us how f changes if we change y by a small amount delta y. If we do both at the same time, then the two effects will add up with each other, right? Because you can imagine that first you will change x, and then you will change y, or the other way around. It doesn't really matter. So if we change x by a certain amount, delta x, and if we change y by the amount delta y, and let's say that we had z equals f of x, y, then that changes by an amount which is approximately f sub x times delta x plus f sub y times delta y. Okay, and that's one of the most important formulas about partial derivatives. Okay, so the intuition for this, again, is just the two effects add up. If I change x by a small amount, and then I change y, well, first changing x will modify f. How much does it modify f? The answer is the rate of change is f sub x. And if I change y, then the rate of change of f when I change y is f sub y. So altogether, I get this change in the value of f. And of course, that's only an approximation formula. Actually, there would be higher order terms involving second and third derivatives and so on. So one way to justify this oh. Sorry, I was distracted by microphone problem. OK, so. How do we justify this formula? Well, one way to think about it is in terms of tangent plane approximation. So let's think about the tangent plane to the graph of a function f. OK, so I have some pictures to show you. It will be easier if I show the pictures. OK, so remember partial f, partial x, was obtained by looking at the situation where y is held constant. So that means I'm slicing the graph of f by a plane that's parallel to the xz plane. And then when I change x, z changes. And the slope of that is going to be the derivative with respect to x. So now if I do the same in the other direction, then I will have similarly the slope in a slice now parallel to the yz plane that will be partial f, partial y. So in fact, 
in each case I have a line, and that line is tangent to the surface. So now if I have two lines tangent to the surface, well, then together they determine for me the tangent plane to the surface. Okay, so let's try to see how that works. So, we know that f sub x and f sub y are slopes, are the slopes of two tangent lines to this plane, sorry, two tangent lines to the graph, and let's write down the equations of these lines. I'm not going to write parametric equations, I'm going to write them in terms of x, y, z coordinates. So, let's say that partial f over partial x at a given point is equal to a, then that means that we have a line given by the following conditions. So, I'm going to keep y constant equal to y0, and I'm going to change x. And as I change x, z will change at a rate uh, that's equal to a, so that would be z equals z0 plus a times the change in x, x minus x0. Okay, that is how you would describe the line that's, I guess, the one that's plotted in green here, that's the intersection with a slice parallel to the xz plane. I hold y constant equal to y0, and z is a function of x that varies with a rate of a. And now if I look similarly at the other slice, let's say that the partial with respect to y is equal to b, then I get another line which is obtained by the fact that z now will depend on y and the rate of change with respect to y will be b, while x is held constant equal to x0. So these two lines are both going to be in the tangent plane to the surface. Okay, so they are both tangent to the graph of f, and, well, together, they determine a plane. And that plane is just given by the formula z equals z0 plus a times x minus x0 plus b times y minus y0. Okay. 